Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Erickson. I am your host today at today's Lunch and Learn. We are going to focus on inventory control, physical inventory processing. As it relates to Sage 300, what are your options? How can you do it? Inventory control is used in distribution, manufacturing, and a variety of industries. It is probably the most unwieldy area of your accounting system. It is a moving target. It is important that you keep track of that moving target, and you can do that through physical inventory processing. So let's take a look at it. It's one of the big questions we get. How do we do physical inventory? What's available to us? So we thought it was a good topic to have. When we come into inventory control, you have a whole section here called physical inventory. And in there, you have a variety of icons, and we're going to look at each of these and explain what they do. In the Generate Inventory Worksheet, we have the ability to restrict by location. Now, these can be physical locations, as we see here, Central Warehouse, Portland, Newark, San Francisco. They can be virtual warehouses. They can be my Q&A area. They can be my retail floor, my manufacturing floor. However you view locations, you can then pick and count those locations individually. You then have the ability to select by account set. And if you remember, account set is predominantly grouped inventory in like costing methods. So the idea here is that you could have many account sets, and, and you may have had that discussion when you were setting up your inventory. You may need to change it now that you know that it can affect physical inventory processing. But basically, it is the thought that like inventory with like costing methods are probably grouped together and therefore would likely be counted together. And so you can go ahead and select one. We're going to do them all because we want all inventory in this location. And then next, you can do a sort. So how do I want this to look? I can sort it by item number, category, a segment of the item. I can also, if you look all the way down here on the bottom, uh, warranty period, warranty, item volume, and sales are all optional fields. Optional fields can be attached to the item master record. And so you see that you could create a custom sort arrangement specifically for your physical inventory processing, counting, and use that as well. We're not going to. We're going to leave it sorted by item number. And then I can come through and I can select all items on the inventory list or only items for this location, or only items in use at this location. We're going to grab all items. I then have the option to default my quantity on hand. I'm going to leave it defaulted, but I'll show you what effect that has. When I say generate, it's warning me that I have an existing worksheet in place and that I'm going to overwrite it. So we go ahead and create the physical inventory worksheet. What does that do for us? Well, it creates a snapshot. We'll look at it right here in this icon called Physical Inventory Quantity. It creates a snapshot of inventory as it is at the moment the worksheet is built. So at the moment the worksheet is built, I have 130 units on hand. Because I check that box on the front screen, I am assuming that my count is 130, and I will only change the count if it's not, if it's varianced. Now, my other option would have been to uncheck that, and then this whole count column would be zero. And it would be zero so that I am forced to count everything and put the number that I count in there. I can't assume, I can't skip, I can't cheat, but it creates more work in counting as well. We then see our variancing, which right now is zero because we defaulted everything to the count. So my variance is zero, stocking units, estimated cost, estimated unit costs, adjusted unit costs, and then any variance expense, and then the status. Now, some things will come up on hold, and they'll come up on hold for a variety of reasons. This one in particular is coming up on hold because there's no cost associated with it. There are 71 pieces on the shelf, but no cost. And so the system says, hey, you might want to take a look at this before you let that one go through. So this is, this is what we've generated. But what do we do with this? So we can come over and we can print an inventory worksheet. And the inventory worksheet comes through and just gives us a printout uh, available. 
and notice that I get my item number, I get my pick sequence, I got the quantity in here. This quantity does not change relative to, to whether I check that box on the front of the creation screen. This comes through relative to the box I, cr I check when I print this screen. We'll look at that in a minute. I can count by my multiple units of measure here. Um, and I can come through. So I could print this multiple times. I could send multiple people out counting the same thing in different parts of the warehouse. And then I have to bring it back and I have to combine those counts together. So when those counts come back and I've combined them together, then what do I do with them? Well, one option or the primary option is I can come to the inventory count screen. Now, again, notice these are all defaulted to count. And that's because we check that box on the front. They're all defaulted, it is really just reading the same data file that this other screen was reading. But all it has here is the count. So I can come through and say I've got 131 of these, I've got 70 of these, I've got 130 of these, I've got 85, we'll skip it, I've got 190 of these, I've got 180 of those. So we can come through and do our counts, but these counts have to be the total count in the system. So if you've got three counters, you got to bring those count sheets together and you have to come back and combine those three count sheets to make sure that the number you're putting in is the total number that is available or is counted for that item. So when I close this, I can then go through and do an inventory reconciliation. So the inventory reconciliation we're doing for location one, because that's what we're working on. We're only going to show the items with variancing. I don't need to show everything. And we're going to go through here and run this report. And you'll see that it comes up with the quantity on hand, what I counted, and the variance that is through here. Now, if these variances are reasonable and acceptable, I can go through and hard post them. If they're not acceptable or if they seem unusually high or low, I can go through and recount them, recheck them, go out and talk to the counters, whatever process I need to do to validate those numbers. And then I can come back into the count sheet over here, inventory counts, and I can update this to, yes, we really do have 71 pieces on the shelf. And when I close that and rerun this report, I will see that I have cleared that variance for that item and it's dropped off the list. Okay, so this is the process. The process is create the physical worksheet, print the count sheet, count the items, bring them back in, combine the counts, enter them in the count sheet, reconcile them here, and if I'm not happy, go back to the count sheet, and then back to reconciliation, back to the count sheet, back to reconciliation until I'm happy. Once I'm happy with the count, then I can post it. So the post is kind of active anticlimactic. I simply come in here and I say, I'm posting for warehouse one. I can set the date wherever I need it to be. I can set the reconciliation to be whatever I want it to be. And I can go ahead and post that. So now we have hard posted that change into the system. And when I look it up, those change numbers are going to go through. But what did it really change? So we had variances of one or two or four pieces but what did it change? And this is an important conversation, an important thing to understand as well, that what really happened here is we, ch we posted the net effect of what was the count to what was in inventory. So when we generate the report, when we generate the file, I have 130 units on the shelf my counter comes through and counts 129 units on the shelf. Once the counter is done, I can let the warehouse go back to work. I can let receiving start to happen again. I can let shipping start to happen again. And we can deal with just the count sheets and the inventory worksheet file that I generated. 
And when we do that, we get a net adjustment of one or two in the case of the examples that we're talking about here. When I go to post that, it doesn't matter what the inventory is for the item anymore. It might be higher, it might be lower than what it was when I generated the physical inventory worksheet. What I'm going to post is the net adjustment. I'm going to post negative one or positive two. I am not going to do an actual post. I'm not going to take 130 and change it to 129. Some systems do that. We do not. So we post the variance between the worksheet that was done and the count that happened. That allows us to release warehousing, shipping, receiving faster than if I have to hold and build out the whole file, verify it because I'm doing an actual post. So it's a real advantage that we're posting the net difference uh, between the two. Okay, with that said, let's look at some other options. So that's the base. We created the uh, inventory worksheet. We looked at it here. We printed our account sheets, and then we entered our counts. Then we came through and reconciled our inventory. When we were happy, we posted. That was the process. But there are options on how we run the process. And so the first is, let's go through and generate a new file here. And when we generate a new file, what we're able to do is come look at this physical file for location one, look at my on hand and on count sheet, and then I have an export capability here. So we are going to go through and notice it says it's a two-step export. We are going to go through and export it. I'm going to call the first step one. And then I'm going to go ahead and export it. And then I'm going to take the next one and call it two. And I'm getting overwrite warnings here. Okay. And we exported it. And now I can come in here. And I can edit it at a spreadsheet level. So this is what was exported. Here's my counts. So I'm going to take this down to 130, down to 70, down to 129. We'll leave 85. We'll come up to 191, like that. And then I can go ahead and just say, save that. And I can turn around and import it. So I can say, file import. It's a two-step import. I start with step one. And then I go to step two. And I come into the system. And notice that the minute I do that, my counted quantity fields change and I get my variancing here, and I can scroll across, and I can look at the cost of variancing here. What is going to happen? I'm going to go down by 20, down by 25, up by 10. And now I can run the same process that I did before. Okay, so now I can go to Inventory Reconciliation. And I can show only those with a variance, and I'll get just those four items that we looked at. I can come back to this count sheet. I didn't exclude this because I imported it because they're reading the same file. So I can come back to this count sheet and make changes if I need to make changes on a one-off basis. So this gives me an option. Now I can create an Excel spreadsheet. I can send the spreadsheet out. I can have people count into the spreadsheet, and I can bring multiple spreadsheets, and I can put them together at the spreadsheet level using the power of Excel, and then I can update the count field in that file and import it in again. Is it a process? Yeah. Is it easy? No. 
Is it something that if I'm doing large quantities of items would probably be a better way to do it? Yes. The amount of work it takes to hand put together multiple count sheets is enormous. So anything that we can do to streamline that will help. And this is one of the options. Now, are there other options? Yes, there are. The other options are, you know, one of the big questions we get is, how do I barcode my inventory? Well, there's a variety of ways to do that. But the first to understand is that barcoding is not native to the system. Barcoding is not inherent. So we have to use outside applications to both print our barcodes and read and count our barcodes. So one option, as an example, is a product called AccuDart. AccuDart can be installed into the system. It uses RF technology to a handheld, and you go through and scan the items and put the count in, scan the items and put the count in, and it talks directly back to physical inventory processing. But the first question we have to ask if we're going to bring barcoding into the mix is how did I get barcoding there? Because in manufacturing, bulk items typically aren't barcoded. Finished good items are barcoded. So now I have to have a conversation and decide how are we going to barcode things? Are we going to barcode bins with item numbers on them? Are we going to barcode tracker IDs onto inbound product when it comes in, uh, comes off the truck? And again, these are these bulk items that aren't barcoded. How are we going to handle that so that we can count? using barcodes. So that's a conversation that we're going to need to have, we're going to need to figure out, we're going to need to decide what works for you. And then there are a variety of ways to handle this Excel spreadsheet import if you choose not to use an AccuDart product, and we can help you with that. Anything from access queries to combine them together to an IMAN script to automate the process, there's a variety of things that we can do and so we encourage you to have a conversation with us to determine what works best for you. But the import capabilities really streamline the product short of these more advanced uh, functionalities. And once we get that in, as I said, we do the same process over again. So we're going to go through and do our final reconciliation for our items here. We're going to take a look at the changes that we've got in place. We can print this, we can send it to the inventory manager, and we're happy with it, we're approved. And so we're going to go ahead and post this. So once we go through and post this, get a number in here, and just go ahead and post this one down. And now my reconciliations are in place. Now don't forget whether you're doing physical inventory or whether you're doing uh, receding or anything else, nothing is really hard posted in the ACPAC uh, inventory control module until day end processing is run. So you don't have to do day end processing after a physical inventory, but it does push it into hard post. It will pick it up in the next uh, day end and process it through. So that brings us to a close on the physical inventory. Sage 300 gives us a very powerful, very functional physical inventory. If this is not enough for you, then we will look at the import-export. We look at AccuDart for barcode uh, reading capabilities. We look at barcode scanning software to create barcodes so that we can apply them to our items. And that is a, a long discussion that, uh, that we'll need to put together. We want you to get this process down. So we want you to reach out to us. You can reach out to me at steve at flsinc.net uh, if you have questions on this. And also if you have thoughts or processes or inputs on this Lunch and Learn, as well as future Lunch and Learns, what would you like to see? You can send those to melanie at flsinc.net as she coordinates all of our Lunch and Learn activities. And with that, I'll stay on the line for a few minutes, but I will wish you a good day, and I hope to see you on a future Lunch and Learn from Frontline Systems. Thank you.